so. It seems that you want to test your knowledge about motorcycles. Good for you. In this case, let's begin with some easy questions. Why do most modern motorcycles use disc brakes? Because they are much more powerful than drum brakes. Obviously. Is a small motorcycle much more economical than a car? Of course it is. What about the usage of the gear shifter? Everyone knows, that the first gear is always opposite to other gears due to technical reasons. And what is the style name of this machine? Definitely a cafe racer. Well, I don't want to shock you. But everything I just said, is not exactly true. And that is precisely what you are about to find out, in the next minutes. Welcome to Racer TV. Most people think that disc brakes are more powerful than drum brakes. But this is not true. If we compare them, you will find that the surface area of two normal brake pads is inferior to the one on a shoe set brake. I only discovered this when I bought my Honda CB125, which has a rare disc brake operated by cable. This means that it requires a lot of strength on my fingers to make it stop properly. Comparing it with the spark of my friend Francesco, which has a drum brake, I can assure you that this is much more powerful and requires much less pressure in the handle lever. So, why are disc brakes so popular? Because they are light easy to maintain, do not need regular adjustments, and especially because they do not overheat as bad as most drum brakes. And this last one, is the main problem with drum brakes. But if they overheat, that also proves it is because of their high braking power. Common sense, says that small motorcycles, are much more economical than cars. But reality, may tell us a different story. 26 years ago, I bought a brand new Honda NSR50, which I still have today. I made almost 40,000 kilometers with it, and I learned that maintaining this little two-stroke machine, is definitely expensive. As you can see on this list, most of the maintenance parts have a short life period. Although the fuel consumption can be considered low, it is not that impressive, for a motorcycle that weights only 92 kilograms. But I have to confess, that I always rode this Honda like a maniac. Which is predictable, when the rider is only 16 years old. So let's compare it with this car. This is a Seat Ibiza 1.9 TDI, with a turbo diesel engine, and 110 horses. I bought it in 1998, and it has almost 200,000 kilometers. And here is the maintenance cost list. It is important to clarify, that none of the lists presented, include any cost of hand labor. I tried to include only the usual maintenance work, and the conclusion is shocking. To be honest, I wasn't expecting this result. But as I already said, the Honda NSR, was always ridden on the limit, which means that most parts could last longer, and the maintenance total cost, probably would be similar to the say at Ibiza. Nonetheless, I think that this proves that small motorcycles, are not so economical as most people think. The big advantage of small motorcycles, is the fact of being very simple machines, which means having less parts to break. And here is another thing, that most people never thought about. 
Why is the first gear always opposite to other gears? In other words, why is the neutral placed between the first and second gear? During the 60s and 70s, some motorcycles had the neutral placed before the first gear, and this means that this was never a technical problem. After 1975, there was an American protocol, demanding that every bike imported into the USA, had to have the neutral between the first and the second gear. And this protocol, is still used today. But what I am looking for, is the practical explanation. What is the advantage of having this configuration? There are several interpretations about it, but the main advantage, is avoiding shifting into neutral accidentally. Unlike cars, with most motorcycles, it is always a little bit difficult, to know the exact gear that we are using, especially with six-speed gearboxes. And this configuration, allows the rider to stop the motorcycle safely, down shifting to first gear, without any concerns about disengaging the gearbox accidentally. This means that the rider, will get the motorcycle into neutral, only when he really wants to, and never by accident. Having the neutral between the first and second gear, may seem very counterintuitive. But the fact, is that it always works well, for more than 40 years. Now I am going to talk about something, that most riders never experienced. In aviation, there is a mechanism called as propeller synchronization, which automatically synchronizes all propellers, of multi-engine aircraft, so that they rotate at the same speed. And here is an interesting question. Is there any chance of synchronizing the engines of two motorcycles? Yes there is. But it is also a rare thing to achieve. Usually, it requires two identical motorcycles, riding side by side, and at the exact same speed. But what is even more difficult, is capturing it on camera. Fortunately, I had that luck. And here is the proof. This is almost like two motorcycles riding as if they were only one. Definitely a very rewarding experience. You should try it. And finally, the last thing that most fans of this channel, wanted to know. The term cafe racer, is not as true as most enthusiasts think it is. As you know, the designation of cafe racer, was given to the motorcycles from the 60s and 70s, which were customized by British youngsters of those days. Their main goal, was to make motorcycles go faster, and doing some street races. The usual meeting point of most of them, were the cafes. And this is precisely where the problem is. Because on those days, they were named as guff, and not cafe. And this means that the correct term, should be calf racers. During the last three years, I received several comments, from some original British cafe racers who experienced that period, and they all confirmed it. The original name of this kind of motorcycles, should be calf racers. The term cafe, was probably adopted after the internationalization of this style of motorcycles. In fact, I also tried Google Translator, and the term CAF, is not even recognized. I believe that today, it is too late to correct it. Because it was already accepted, as a true universal designation. But at least, 
you are now one of the few that knows the truth about calf racers. Not to mention all the other four things I already explained. And now, I have a small surprise for you. We are making a lottery, in which the winner will receive one of Big Cafe Racer's t-shirts of their choice. And also a 15% discount, in any of our products. To participate, all you have to do, is hit like, on the Big Cafe Racer's Facebook page. And subscribe to our mailing list. All the instructions, will be in the video description. Thank you, for watching Racer TV, and as always, I hope to see you next week.